Hey y'all, this is a video that has been long in the making, um, well overdue, but if you are here looking to find um, all the details from how I became Grayson's mom to um, the day we met Hannah, meeting their bio mom, and figuring out and unwrapping the crazy miracle that God presented to us. Um, that's what I'm gonna do today. So stick around, can't promise I'm gonna be that concise. I wanna do it well. I wanna answer so many questions that we get every day. Um, the press and the media have their versions of the story and, and pieces and parts of it, but I'm hoping this one kind of wraps it all up for you guys and really gives you the answers you're looking for about how our miracle unraveled. It's a fun story to tell, so I can't wait. All right, so I'm gonna start at the very beginning from the day I got the call about Grayson. At the time, to give you just a little bit of history, I was um, a foster mom for about four months at the time, three or four, and I had at the time a 12-month-old, actually it was 14 months at that time. He'd come to me at 12, he'd been with me for two months, um, and we knew he was gonna transition home some point pretty soon, so I was open and welcoming of a longer term placement. I really kind of had figured out, okay, I can do this single mom thing. I can do this long term. Doesn't necessarily have to be temporary. Either way, I really wanted a longer term, no more kind of short term placements. I had told the caseworker that on her last visit to my home. And lo and behold, she gave me a call one day, left a voicemail, hey, I know it's a long shot, but would you be interested? We have a baby boy that needs a home um, that's just been born and we're looking for a placement. It's highly likely to be a foster to adopt. Call me back if you're interested. Um, let's just say, I was at work when I got the call. I was like, excuse me, I have to call you back. I have to, I'll, I'll be back in just a minute. And I called her back and said, give me five minutes, let me call my mom. She had given me just a few details. Um, basically that it was a boy, couple days old, um, his mother had left a few hours after birth and had made no attempt to come back and the information so far wasn't leading them to anyone. So again, they didn't think that she was coming back, so it was likely to be a foster to adopt, which meant they wanted whoever took him to be open to that at least. Not a guarantee by any means, but open to it. Um, which I had realized God had kind of put that on my heart that I was ready. And so <laughs> I'm like, give me a minute, I'll call you back. Uh, rang up my mom, told her story. She started asking me all these questions more about him and I'm like, I don't even know. I just said yes. <laughs> I want to say yes. Will you help me? Uh, there was no way that I was gonna take care of a 14 month old and a newborn and work full time by myself. So thankfully my mom agreed. She was wonderful. She said, yes, we'll figure this out. We'll figure out plane, plane rides later, call them back, figure out the details. So lo and behold, 24 hours later, um, I went to the hospital to meet him. I was nervous. Uh, I had had some little babies before, but I had never, um, uh, this many days old, like that just wasn't something I had been around necessarily a ton of. Um, I'd never been around a drug exposed baby. I had no idea, honestly. Um, and so I was nervous. I was talking to my sister on the way and she's like, are you gonna name him? Do you get to name him? I'm like, I, I don't even know. No idea. I have no clue. Um, and so, we talked a little bit about if I did, I was like, well, I have some names. I, I, I have a baby list name on my phone. I am that kind of mom. Um, I had been dying to be a mom for so long and kept those names. And I always had at the top of my list, I just felt everything had taken so long to get to be a mom. At the top kept swinging back up to Grace or Grayson. By the grace of God, I had gotten a son. That was gonna be the first kid that it felt like so much had gone into becoming a mom. And so and my sister was like, oh, okay, that's really weird because um, she has two little boys and if she had had, that was one of their top names, if they'd had a third, which they didn't, um, but it was right there at the top was Grayson. And I said, that's really funny. I'm like, maybe, maybe that is it then. Maybe that's that sign God's telling me this is the right name. But what if I give it to him and then I don't get to keep him? There's no guarantees. So I went to the hospital, went up the door with my little infant carrier, like freaked out, did I have it? Like, y'all, I didn't even have an outfit. Most people spend months picking an outfit out for their child. Um, I didn't, didn't have it. I had some outfit that I didn't feel was even that cute, it was decent, but it was what I had <laughs> um, on short notice. And I just walked in and he was there. There was one other baby kind of sitting under a light, but other than that, he was in this room pretty much by himself with the nurse. Um, it was, it was, 
definitely heartbreaking to see that he just, it wasn't, I guess, what I imagined. I think most babies, they don't put a lot into those nurseries because they, you know, those babies spend time with their moms and they put more energy and effort into the rooms. Um, but needless to say, I met his nurse and I could tell he was well loved, well cared for. He was tiny, he was so tiny. I think he was right around six pounds at the time. And so, smallest baby I'd ever seen. Um, I was freaked to even touch him for a minute. It took me a minute to be willing and able to hold him and realize that I was gonna take this kid home today uh, in just a few <laughs> hours. Um, we spent a lot of time there, there was a lot of paperwork, there's caseworkers there to sign and release to figure things out. Um, and they walked me through, you know, I had questions about what it would take to, to take a drug exposed baby home. I didn't really know. Um, I, I didn't even know, I said to the doctor, I don't even know how you take this drug. Like, I, I, I don't, it's not my world, like what is it? Thankfully, she was able to kind of tell me that, that this drug happened to be, if you have to pick a drug, um, one of the better drugs. That that was why he was able to go home so quickly. Um, it's not as, um, some of the other types of drugs will require more um, detoxing and time adjusting, but he was three days old and able to come home, which was crazy. Um, but she said, you know, he's, he's good, he's doing really well. Um, so, and then while there, they did say, you know, it, Right now, he's Boy, that is his name, Boy. That was his legal name. But they said, we don't think that's reasonable for him to, to be called. We realize that's unrealistic. If you want to pick a name that you want to call him, that's okay. And I was like, Whoa! But in that moment, in that fastness, I was like, all right, I'm gonna go with it. You know what? Grayson's at the top of my list. My sister said it was at hers. It just felt right. So we went with it. And he became Grayson that day. Still legally Boy, but they knew and kind of put in the file that he would be called Grayson. Um, by his foster family. We went home and all those things. So that was a long version of the first part. I'm gonna try to skip faster through the rest. Um, essentially what happened over the next 11 months was um, my other foster baby went home a couple months later. So we did, we did juggle two babies for a while, which was really fun. Um, a, a story for another time. But um, he met my family. We went through all those markers and milestones. Um, at four months old, after they put ads in the newspaper, done all their kind of checks and balances, their investigations, hired investigators, no one really came up. The names, the information she gave, the mother had given, didn't lead them anywhere. Um, and so at four months old, they terminated her rights. Um, and it was basically kind of a Jane Doe and a John Doe. Whoever you are, whoever, if you come back, your rights have been terminated. Um, and so at that day, they also ruled, um, it took us hours in the courtroom. Gosh, it was like something messed up. It was my first time ever really being that long in the courtroom. Um, and they knew I was really anxious and that this boy deserved something, um, that he deserved a bath forward. And so they rescheduled stuff and made sure that that termination happened that day um, to keep it moving forward. And um, yeah, so we, we terminated. It was a, it was a very difficult day um, for me, just kind of mourning that loss of knowing that, um, you know, one day I was gonna have to tell this little boy that that's all I knew is that, he had been left, they had never come back, they didn't even give enough information to find them. Um, and I didn't really have any answers other than that, then, then he was drug exposed. Um, that was a hard day. But they did make me his permanent home, and so we were on the path to adoption. It took a number of months, we had some hiccups along the way, but at 11 months old, on May 25th of 2017, I adopted Grayson and he officially got his name and became Grayson. Um, Grayson is his middle name. I'll try to explain the names through this too. Um, in the hospital that day I'd been there, they called him Charlie Love is what they told me because they didn't want to just call him boy either. They didn't feel that was right. So they had this Charlie Love name for him. Charlie wasn't really his thing. Even today I still am like, no, it's not really Charlie. But I did love the name Charles and I wanted to honor that first name and those nurses who had loved him. Um, those first few days are so critical. So we honored that and we call him Charles Grayson. That was his first name. He goes by his middle name, Grayson. Um, after that, so we came home, I was settling in. People were like, what are you gonna do now? Are you gonna still foster? Um, and I'm like, I'm good. I'm really good. You know, down the road, we're, we'll get to that. But I'm gonna take my time. I've got a special needs kid. We have so many things to work on. He was very developmentally behind, tiny, he's failure to thrive. We had a lot of issues going through and he had a lot of work to go and I knew he needed a lot. And so I was like, mm, maybe some respite care, some temporary care, but not long-term, not for a while. Maybe in six months, 18, 18 months, when he's 18 months old in December, we'll talk about that. 
and you know, we had a big party coming up. I had family flying in. We're gonna throw this huge birthday adoption party in June. We'd actually looked at an adoption date in June, but I had kind of moved it up. Um, I just felt it was right. I had another good friend adopting her son on the same day. Um, so we used the same videographers and photographers and it just worked out. Um, and now I know why <laughs> somewhat. I feel like God had intervened in that moment as well because just um, two weeks later, um, I got another call. Um, and I'll tell you that something was different I knew. I had gotten other emails, calls about other babies in the meantime and kind of just said, no, you know, we're really just not ready. But that call that day, my caseworker, the same woman who called me about Grayson, called me and said, you know, I know you, that you're really not planning to take placements right now, but we have an emergency case. We have a baby girl who is at the hospital and needs to come home today. She needs a placement, even if it's just temporary. If you could really help us out, that would be amazing. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'm like, I know I should say no. Give me a minute. Again, let me call somebody. I'll call you back. So I called um, Ashley, my roommate, my photographer, you see so many wonderful photographs of us, um, who was living with us at the time, and my mom. I called them both, because um, I knew I was gonna need help. Um, and I, kept, I remember vividly saying, I have no idea why, everything says I should say no, but God is telling me I'm supposed to say yes, and I don't know why. Um, and that's not a normal thing for me. I guess I'd have to give you a longer history. Um, I'm kind of a, a later in life believer and converter um, and feeling very, you know, been through a lot of redemption. And it's just not something I've ever felt or been called for or would say normally, but at that moment, that's what it felt like. I'm like, God is saying to say yes, and I am freaked out. Like, I can't, how am I in the world? Am I gonna take care of a special needs? Technically two, she was also drug exposed. They did tell me that, but I'm like, okay, we're gonna say yes and we'll figure this out. Maybe it's just temporary. So I drove home, I was out of town for work, um, out of the area. Um, so they basically picked her up. This time I didn't get to go to the hospital. They brought her right to the house because of the timing um, and met me there. Ashley went and picked up um, my son, Grayson. We all met back at the house. Um, I had a community group family members and people bringing food and clothes because I'm like, what? I don't even have girl stuff. I've had a boy. Um, I have no girl clothes. What am I doing? I mean, we can put her in some boy clothes, but again, she probably deserves more than that. So she came home, I met them, they brought her there. They didn't stay but maybe 15 minutes at the house. Two women came in and, that I didn't know, met them for the first time, hands me a baby and says, you know, we just need to see your house and then we'll be out of your way. I'm like, okay. Um, so we walk around, we're talking a little bit. They're telling me, um, you know, she was at the same hospital that Grayson was, same exposure. Um, so I'm like, okay, okay. I can do it. I've done this before. We can do this again. We can do this again. We'll figure this out. Okay. And they leave pretty quickly. And so now it's dinner time. It was probably around five o'clock. So we start, Ashley's there. It's me and her basically. Eventually the kind of the rest of the crowd leaves and we're trying to settle in and I'm looking through some of the paperwork cause I didn't have a lot of time. Um, I do remember actually, I missed a step. When she was there, I took a quick look. They had left her medical bracelets on her, uh, probably on her ankle, somewhere on her. Um, and I noticed that the name of the mom, I'm like, well, that's funny. That's the same as Grayson's mom's name, just the first name. Um, I'm like, oh, whatever. It was quick. Let's get you out, out of the door. We got to keep going. Um, but as I looked at that paperwork later that night, mind you, I had just adopted Grayson, and you get a lot of paperwork when you adopt them, and all their history that you weren't allowed to know as a foster parent, they divulged to you. And so I had gotten more information and knew about her now, his mom and what information she'd given at the hospital. And so I had just recently read that and now I'm reading this paperwork and I'm like, that's really weird. Okay, that I'm like, Ashley, I, something's not right. Will you watch the kids? I'm gonna go get this paperwork because something's too similar here. So I went and got the paperwork from Grayson's and I looked not only did they have the same name, but their date of birth was literally one day apart. Same year, same month, just one day different. Okay, that's a little weird. That's not normal. And so I started looking at them and I'm like, is it even possible to have kids this, this fast? Like, they're only 11 months apart. Is that physically possible? And so <laughs> Ashley's like, yeah, yeah, look, look. It's, it's called uh, Irish Twins. It is possible. I'm like, okay. All right, well, maybe I'm not that crazy. Um, and so then I continue to look at them and I'm like, this is weird. Grayson is, um, now we know, he's, he's half black. He's a very dark, you know, dark skinned, dark complexion child, curly, dark hair. Um, 
and this little girl in front of me now is very pale, like strawberry blonde hair, stick straight. It's, you know, at first glance they don't look a lot alike, but we start looking, I'm like, no, they do have the same kind of chin dimple, and there's certain things about them. Um, they had some birthmarks, they both kind of have a birthmark back here. Things about them started to do, other things we looked, started to, I'm like, something's not right. This is weird. <laughs> These people are gonna think I'm crazy, but I think something's not right. So I started texting um, Grayson's caseworker and I said, you're gonna think I'm really, really crazy, I know right now, but I'm telling you, I kind of think that I just got this placement that might be related to Grayson. Um, can you get on this case and help us figure this out? She's like, what? No way, there's no way. I'm like, I don't know, I'm crazy, I know. She's like, all right, well, I'll see what I can do. So it's six o'clock at night, there's nothing I can do but just go through my thoughts thinking, is there something Rand? like what's going on? So I continue looking through paperwork. We go through the night. The next day, um, I think that was Tuesday. The next day, I start calling to find more information. They have intake workers and I'm like, this is really strange, but can you give me some more information? Can you tell me something else about these children? I don't wanna break confidentiality. Anything I'm not supposed to know, please don't tell me. I just am wondering, are there more kids? Because um, they had said, they actually had told me that there were more children, that that was one of the reasons they weren't sure um, if she'd be forever, like there might be other family members, there were other children they could tell that through the system, somewhere in Colorado, that they had been through the system. They were able to tell me there were two previous girls that had been adopted through another county that no longer live, that were kind of off somewhere else. They could tell me that. And I asked, can you tell me their ages? Uh, it's kind of like, is it possible? Could he be born? Is there a window? And there was. Um, they told me a certain number of children that she had at the time. I'm like, okay, all right, all right, this is possible. Couldn't give me much else than that. We continued to kind of divulge through it. A couple days later, um, I got a call and they said, will you, you know, we'd like to do a meet and greet with the mom. She'd like to do a visit. Um, she wants to stick around, we want to do a visit. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm totally open to that, let's do it. Mind you, I'm scared out of my mind. I'm just, the nerves, all the thoughts, all these things of like, is this real, are still going through my head. I've been sitting for days wondering, and I'm gonna go meet this woman that could be the mom to my child. This woman I thought I would never know. Um, I'm freaked out. Um, but I agree and I mean I'm riding up the elevator I'm like waiting I'm looking in the parking lot anywhere as I go I'm like it could which one could be her what could she be we get on the elevator and I'm kind of scared but I'm trying not to be too obvious and whoever it is obviously probably is gonna recognize their child when but they're not gonna recognize me but they may see the child I kind of had her covered up a little bit just to kind of be careful and, and, and not you just again it's a new baby you don't expose them you're taking them out a couple days old so Caseworker comes out and calls our names and I see her and I look at her and I am, at that moment, I just, I think I about inside and I hope she never saw, I don't know that she recognized on my face, maybe she just thought I was more scared, probably so. Um, but I saw this woman who looked so much like my son, um, far more like my son than she did like the child, the baby that I was there holding about to hand to her. Um, so much so that I was like, this is my kid's mom. But I couldn't say anything, and obviously I didn't want to. We didn't know enough facts, we didn't know enough, and the last thing I would want to do is create drama for this already mom who's going through a lot of trauma with her baby. So we go back, we spend a few minutes. She was super sweet, she brought a gift for me, a gift for um, the baby, which was Zoe at the time. That was Zoe's name, or Hannah's name as a child. And so we visit for just a couple minutes, do a little icebreakers. In that time period, I'm able to just casually ask, I'm like, oh, you know, how many children do you have? And she says, um, the county had given me one number. She gave me number one higher. I'm like, whoo, check. Okay, I'm like, oh, how many boys and how many girls? And again, they had given me how many boys and how many girls she'd had. They could answer that, because it wasn't private details. Boy was missing. I'm like, I'm shaking as I'm reliving this, because it's just in that moment, all I wanted to do was be like, I have your son. Um, but I did not, I did not, thank <laughs> um, I just, I knew it wasn't right, I knew it wasn't the right timing, it wasn't the right situation, and I really had to know before I was ever gonna say anything. And so, I proceeded to go back out to the waiting room, we, our kind of casual time ends, and, and it's time for her to have her time with the child, and I'm just out there, I'm like texting, I'm like, oh my God, to the case where I, like, like, I really think this is real, I think I'm not crazy, and I know y'all think I am, but I really don't think I'm crazy. And, so that was a Friday. So again, I have to go through the weekend. We have to keep going. 
And the next week, the caseworker is going to meet with her one-on-one -on -one and hear more of her story. Um, and she touches base with me before to understand my concerns and what I think. Um, and, you know, then goes and meets with her um, to do that. While she does that, um, we also end up, um, I'm at work. So while the caseworker meets with her, I'm at work. Um, I'm at a job site talking to another fellow mom of mine, a friend, mom friend of mine, it's a coworker. Um, and she calls me back. I know she's in there and she's going to call me sometime later that day. And she calls me and she said, oh my gosh, Katie. She was like, I obviously can't share anything with you. That's all confidential. But I'm, I, but I can tell you this, that I don't think you're crazy, that I think there's a really good chance that she is, um, that this is her mom. And I have no idea how this has happened. Um, this is really a little unreal. I've never seen a case like this. I don't understand, but I think that you're not crazy. And I burst into tears in the middle of the office. I was like, how, what if I had said no? Like, what if, what if I had, let all my fears and all the things I thought I should be doing. And I had told people, you know, people I was crazy would adopt a kid in the first place by myself, um, much less take two on. And so I was so relieved, overwhelmed. Who knows, that moment of God telling me like, you, you answer, you listen, and it was the right thing. This is for real. It was crazy. And then 10 minutes later, she gave me another call and she said, the first call, she's like, oh, I'm 90% sure. She called me back 10 minutes later and said, Katie, I'm 100% sure you are right. Um, the name that she had given as her last name, their, their first name was always right, but the last name was not true that she gave. It was false with Grayson. And that name she found, or a different spelling of it, it was close again. Um, she found a version of it in some extended relatives to baby Zoe. And she's like, now I'm sure it explains exactly what she did, why she gave that name, that information, all of that. And I just, finally that feeling of feeling crazy and wondering, and, and was this a, a miracle from God? It was, like, there's no way, like nobody knew. Everybody thought I was insane when I said, yeah, <laughs> you literally have all the places you could have sent this child and all the people you could have called that day, you called me. Um, and despite all the odds and all the reasons I should have said no, I said yes. Um, so that was a big, big day. Um, to go, um, and this is long, <laughs> um, but to continue on, I, I'll give you just a little bit more that I hope answers some more questions. Um, after that day, um, since we really pretty much knew, we still didn't say anything. There was still a lot of confidentiality. There was a lot of complication about this. My adoption was closed with Grayson. She didn't know. Um, there was a lot of legality to figure out at this point of how this would happen. And it was new for the county. They'd never seen something like this. So I had to kind of remain quiet and keep it in, which was hard. But we had an upcoming doctor's visit and the mom wanted to go. And I said, sure, I, I feel safe. I feel comfortable. We'll go together. I was nervous, but I was willing to go. Um, and I wanted to know as much as I could. At this point, even no matter what the outcome, I wanted to know um, as much about health and history and anything I could about my kid that would help. So I prepped the doctor, I called our pediatrician who'd been with us for kids, all the kids up until now, and warned her and said, here's what's gonna happen. She's gonna come in, we're not gonna reveal any details, we're gonna keep it very quiet and, and, and not let this happen. Um, they were great, the hospital was amazing. They you know, took care of it, they made sure everything went well. Um, but what I heard that day, um, the mom proceeded to kind of tell some things about her history. To, um, it was tough, it was really, really tough to hear. Um, and she proceeded when we were one-on-one, -on -one, we were waiting for some lab work, they needed to do some testing for, for Zoe, and she proceeded to tell me a bit more about the bio, bio dad for, for Zoe and, um, and the history and, and eventually what, what she told me about him told me about why she had left Grayson at the hospital. I, I never really understood, I didn't know at that point what was the difference. Why had she left one and stayed with the other? Um, and she told me that, or gave me at least enough insight. Is it true or not? I have no idea. But what she told me that day explained it. Um, I won't reveal that, that's kind of her story to tell, but I will tell you it explained it. Um, but it also terrified me. Um, from that moment on, I really wasn't sure I would ever tell her um, who I had, who my son was. She knew I had a son, she knew I'd recently adopted one, um, but had never asked questions like that, never seemed to make any connection to that. 
Um, so from that day forward for a long while, it got very contentious after that, um, or not contentious. It wasn't contentious. We always had a great relationship. I won't say contentious. That's other word. It was it was difficult and challenging for me, um, knowing this secret, trying to protect my son and his identity for his safety, um, trying to though hold on and, and fight for Zoe, but while maintaining that confidentiality, there were other family members just dying to to adopt Zoe. Um, long off in there, but I felt obviously that there was this reason they had been brought together. So we went through a lot of fight trying to figure out what was the right thing to do. Um, there were times in which my family actually, because of the safety of Grayson said, send her away. He's your son, you're his mother. You have to do what's right for him, regardless of her. And to me, that wasn't an answer. That wasn't even an option. Um, they had not met her, none of my family had met her. Um, and I, I think it was difficult. It was hard for them to say, it was hard for me to hear. But ultimately to me, from that moment that I knew that they were siblings, that fight was there. I'm, this is family and I'm gonna fight and we're gonna figure it out. And not just because it's, you know, it's not easy to take care of, it wasn't easy to be taking care of two kids in the, in the midst of all this, right? Um, to just do, take care of the day to day, but I couldn't see letting her go. Um, and so we proceeded through some difficult and challenging, challenging times. I eventually hired an attorney to help me navigate the situation. Um, Ultimately, obviously, um, there came a point at which in order to save her, I had to be willing to reveal the adoption and the identity, that that was the only way for the court to rule in my favor to make it that I was family, that I was kin. Um, at that point in time, um, I, we were a member of months in. Her mother actually only stayed engaged in the case for about four months. Um, and so at that point in time, she'd actually disappeared again um, with nowhere to be found, no contact, nothing. Um, which in retrospect made it easier for me to feel safer and more comfortable to reveal that. Um, and so I did. And then they did actually try to find her that day. Many people ask me if she knows today. I still have no idea. I can tell you that the court did try to find her to tell her, um, to let her know, to inform her. Um, but she was nowhere to be found. And so... Um, they let her know. They let the other families know. There was another family that was up there um, who you guys now know today and see. They were another family that was fighting, um, the Whitney family, who's out there with us, um, who we've reunited with. That's a whole nother video and stories. Um, but they let them know um, and everything obviously proceeded. The judge ruled in our favor to keep them together, that there was clearly a reason these children were meant to be together and that because they were siblings that had been raised together at this point, that that was the best place meant to stay. Um, so I hope that that answers, that's a really long video, um, but I just felt like all the short videos or the online articles, whatever I could write, never quite does it justice. Um, and I hope that answers a lot of people's questions about how and, and clarity about the miracle. Um, and usually the page turner before you knew about Jackson was that there was another baby. Um, and we did um, find out just 13 months after I took Hannah in. Um, she became Hannah eventually, sorry. So she's Zoe Hannah, I should answer that too. She's Zoe Hannah, Hannah means grace. It translates to grace and I wanted. So there, you know, I said at the beginning, grace and grace and Hannah means grace. And we kept Zoe, we honored what her mom gave her. So we called her Zoe Hannah and went by Hannah for safety reasons and all of what was going on. I felt that was a better choice. Um, we'd still have it legally, but we would call her Hannah. And, um, so 13 months after we had her, um, another baby boy was delivered. Um, I believe actually at that time, about when she stopped showing up to visit Hannah was when she got pregnant with Jackson. Um, so lots of crazy things and how they unfold. I hope that answers your questions. I hope that makes some clarity. Um, thank you guys so much for following along. If you've made it through this video and this long, Wow, you guys are awesome. <laughs> um, but thank you for following us. Subscribe, we're gonna try to do more. I'm gonna try to keep answering questions and do more. So subscribe, like, comment, tell me if you like this, tell me what else you wanna hear. I'm gonna try and continue to do better and more. And I like this video interaction because I think you get to hear our story so much better. So follow us, follow us along. Thanks you guys.